Unfortunately, winter is coming. And for those of us with short-haired dogs who live in cold weather climates, it's the time of year to start thinking about what are we gonna dress our dogs in to help us stay out and keep hiking all winter long. Now, every dog is a little bit different, and so not all dogs are gonna need every piece of winter gear. But I live and hike with a very short-coated dog, and I let her guide kind of how much gear she needs. She typically needs a sweater, and sometimes her herder jacket in the winter. And then the other variable piece of gear that she needs is a winter dog boot. She only needs it at certain temperatures and in certain conditions, but we always hike with a few winter booties in my pocket so that I can put them on her paws when she needs them. Not all dogs will ask, but my dog will stop, she'll lift a paw, she'll let me know when she needs to have a booty put on. Depending on your dog and how hard they'll push themselves, you might have to know ahead of time what conditions your dog will need the booties in. But even after you've decided if your dog needs booties, um, it really comes down to a question of what's the best kind? I ultimately ended up narrowing it down to three different styles of dog boots, all of which I have purchased and tested out. And I went ahead to help you guys make that decision. And I compared the three styles of dog boots that I have. The first type of dog boot that I had purchased was this one. This is a Mutluck fleece lined dog boot. I had liked it because it had a leather sole, so I thought it was a little bit more protection. I thought the fleece lining was going to be a little bit warmer for her, um, and reviews said that they stayed on pretty well. So I got her a set of four of these. Um, that was the first dog boot that Glia ever wore. Um, also, as I go through these, I do have a video review of each one individually, so if you're interested in those, I'll link them as we go through. But the first dog boot we tried was this Mutt Luck. The Mutt Luck, it worked pretty well. Um, but I was curious to see if other styles would maybe stay on a little bit better. The biggest problem I had with the Mutluck boot was that I think I bought a size too large and they just slipped off a little bit. So the next set that I got um, is from dogbooties.com. So they're essentially sled dog boots. Um, they don't have much insulation at all. They're really lightweight, kind of cheap dog boots, but they've been really functional and they're my favorite. You'll see the reasons why as we go through this video. Um, because I was testing them out for the first time, I got them in three different thicknesses. So I have a thousand denier, a 500 denier is the black one, and then I have a lightweight pink one, a 330 denier weight. The 330 is going to be the thinnest, really like soaks up water if the trail gets kind of wet. The 1000 is a lot more water repellent, so that's kind of nice if I'm in soggy type conditions, you know, where you're walking through snow and it's slushy. And then this mid-weight one is the 500. As they get a little bit stiffer or thicker, they get stiffer, right? And so you may end up preferring something anywhere in the middle. They say that these 330s are their most popular. Personally, I really like the 500, but that's just um, kind of how it fits my dog. I was worried that because these were not lined and, and didn't have any kind of warmth component to them, that her feet would get cold in these. But honestly, um, they stay on really nice and she seems to do just fine. So if she's holding a pop and I put these on, she'll walk the rest of the hike, um, really no matter how cold it is, with just a lightweight booty like these dogbooties.com dog boots. And then because I'm kind of a rough wear addict and I love their harnesses, I did want to give the rough wear boots a try. Now the rough wear boots, um, I have the Polar Trex ones, the ones that are made for the winter, are a little bit higher tech. So you can see here they've got this like thick sole, it's called a Vibram sole. Um, they have the little velcro to cinch it up tight here and then they have a zipper that goes up over the top to try to keep the snow out um so these are a little fancier uh they do recommend you pair it up with a sock for a little extra comfort so we have the rough wear bark and boot socks as well so bark and boot socks rough wear polar tracks boots um, and I was hoping that these would have a little more traction on ice 
and just be a little bit better um, in really icy kind of conditions. That being said, these do not fit Julia very well on her front feet. The, her front dew claws get in the way and she gets a little uncomfortable, but they're really nice on her back feet. Um, and we'll again go through how these kind of stacked up as we did our comparison. So for this comparison, I did compare these boots. I tried to do a little bit of a scientific method and you can find the full results over on positivelyintrepid.com. But I tested them for a few different factors. So we did how warm they are. And to try to figure out how warm they are, I heated up some water, not quite boiling, but I heated up on the stove in a pan, poured it into Ziploc baggies, and then cinched them into each boot with a little thermometer, stuck them outside in the snow, and waited to see how fast they got to kind of baseline temperature. Um, we did, I checked how heavy they are. I feel like, you know, weight doesn't matter too much for me with my own shoes, but it is nice to be in a lightweight shoe when I'm out hiking. So I figured dogs have to feel pretty much the same. I checked water resistance, how much water gets inside the boots, how long does it take the boots to dry after they get wet. Did a kind of subjective traction, you know, how much do we think that these boots will have traction in icy conditions. Checked how long each boot takes to put on put my review of how well they stay on. That one's a little bit subjective as well. Um, and then comfort, again, I'm just basing that on how well Galia walks around in each boot. And that's a subjective thing as well. So objectively, we tried to check warmth, weight, water resistance. Everything else is a little bit subjective. All right, so let's see what the results were. First, let's look at the warmth. Again, for this warmth, I heated the water on the stove to a temperature of about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I used a syringe to measure the same amount of water into three different sandwich bags, placed one sandwich bag in each different type of boot. Um, I did this twice, so different combination of boots. Um, and then I put a little cooking thermometer in the top and cinched the top of the boot up so we could compare. For the first test, I compared the fleece line Muttluck with the 500 Denier Cordera dog booty. And we did the Rough Wear Polar Trex boot with the sock in it, okay? So those are the three. The results honestly surprised me a little bit. I really thought that the Rough Wear boot with the sock would be the one that stayed the warmest, but it turned out it was fairly similar across the boots. Um, I thought the Mutlux would be second warmest, um, but they really were the same as the dog booty. Um, and so I have this little chart and you can see that across this video. Um, we timed it from minute zero when I stuck them outside all the way to two hours. Um, and they all just kind of slowly lost their temperature, but dog booties really held up quite well. And so then I went ahead and I tried to have a control for the experiment. So I did the experiment again. This time I only heated the water to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, so there is a little bit of variability there. Um, this time I did the 500 Denier Cordera, the dog booties, sorry, 500 Denier Cordera dog booties, the Polar Trex boots with a Barkin boot sock, um, and then we just did a plain plastic bag as kind of a control. And both of the dog boots did outperform the plastic bag, so that was nice to see. Um, after an hour outside, the plastic bag was already down to about 30 degrees Fahrenheit, so it was getting slushy, technically under freezing. Again, the thermometers aren't the most specific, but it was down to 30 while the other boots were at 40, and I, I stopped the experiment there. So there was no real clear winner in the warmth round. Subjectively, when I take the boots off, I do feel like Glia's paws feel warmer when they're like, so I, if I take the boot off and I just holding her paws in my hands, I feel like the fleece line of the Polar Trex boots are a little bit warmer than the dogbooties.com boots, but not a huge difference there. For the sake of ranking, just based on the numbers that I've showed you on the screen, I did give the Polar Trex ones kind of the best as far as warmth, Mutlux were second and dog booties were number three. All right, so then I went ahead and I weighed each of them. Again, weight is important for dog comfort, but weight is also important for like carrying them along, right? So I carry them in my pockets quite frequently. And when I do that, it's nice to have something that's lightweight or if I'm out backpacking and I just wanna have them along, weight matters. And so we did go ahead and we weighed all of them. The heaviest one 
is gonna be the Polar Treks. No surprise there, it's the one with the rubber sole. And then if you add the sock along with it, it's definitely the heaviest. So the Polar Treks is 1.5 ounces. The Barkin Boot sock weighs 0.1 ounce, so it's pretty light. Um, but combined together, we're at 1.6 ounces. Coming in second, or second heaviest, is the Mutt Lux. It's at 1.4 ounces. And then all of the dog booties are pretty lightweight. The 1,000 denier is 0.4 ounces. The 550 denier is 0.2 ounces. And the 330 was also about 0.2 ounces. So dog booties are definitely the lightest if you're going for a lightweight. Okay. So next I wanted to check, you know, how water resistant repellent are they? Um, you know, it's, it's a little hard sometimes to test it inside with just straight water because lots of times when you're out in the winter you're walking through like little slush pockets and things like that. But what I did to try to test it is I took a glass Tupperware essentially and I filled it up with water and then I would dunk the boots into the water um, and weigh them afterwards to see how much water they picked up, right? So theoretically if they were less water repellent, they would take on more water and be heavier afterwards. I also did one where I folded up paper towel inside of it and the I checked how much water the paper towel got on it. So I like stuffed the paper towel in like it was a dog paw um, and then weighed the paper towel afterwards as well. Um, and so the paper towel test, the Mutt Lux, my Lux it took up about 0.25 um, ounces of water. The Polar Tracks had a little bit less than the Mutt Lux. Um, I don't have the exact number written down in front of me, but a little bit less. The Thousand Deniers actually did really good at protecting the paper towel. The first time I did it, the paper towel didn't get wet at all. The five. 100 denier dog booty did a little bit better than the Polar Treks and the Mutt Lux, and then the 330 just like let water in like crazy. <laughs> so again in that first test with the paper towel we had the worst one was the 330. Next worst was actually the Mutt Lux. Um, if it got up a little bit across the stretchy cuff um, it definitely lets in some water. Then it was actually the Polar Treks. Um, and then we went ahead and it was the 500 and the best one was the 1000 um, denier Cordero, um, dogbooties.com, yeah. And so then, like I talked about before the paper towel test, sorry I got a little out of order, but the paper towel test results I gave you first, talked about second, but the one where I dipped the boot in the water and checked to see how much they weighed afterwards that one um, had a little bit different results. And I was trying to compare their dry weight to their wet weight. And so really we're kind of looking at percentages for them. Um, and then you can see in this chart here that all of them jumped up in weight after I soaked them, right? Um, and the Polar Trucks did have the sock inside of it for this test, so just be aware of that because the sock does absorb more water than the boot itself does. Um, and so if you get the sock wet, it's, it adds a lot of water retention. But since that's the way it was recommended to use, I have the whole, whole thing together. As we look through the results here, the dog booties were completely dry within four to six hours. Um, so they dried out really fast, um, but they did all, you know, almost double their weights or more, the 330 more than doubled. It really does take a lot of water up. Polar Trex and the Mutt Lux also more than doubled their weight, but they took a little bit longer to dry out. Um, and that makes sense because they're just, there's like thicker, they're warmer, right? Thicker, warmer kind of fabrics. And so it takes longer for like a sock to dry out than it does for this thin denier you know, 500 denier Cordera to dry out. So dog booties are, are kind of the winner, honestly, in the water repellency. If you not, if you take out the 330, 330 is not water resistant at all, but the Cordera actually keeps things fairly dry and it dries out fast and it doesn't retain much. So that's really good. Then I did the traction and, you know, I tried to do some traction tests where I like put some weight inside of the boots and like put them on an angle on an ice block and saw which one slid the fastest. Eh, you know, I have some results with that, but really 
it wasn't the easiest test. Subjectively, Glia seems to get better grip with this Vibram sole. Like, so that is definitely better for her than the leather or the dogbooties.com. So, um, rough wear polar trucks is the one that I would say outperforms in the traction. Seems like the leather sole of the Muttluck does a little bit better than the dog booties. So I would say winter polar trucks, next up's Muttlucks, then it's your dogbooties.com. All right, next we moved into how easy are they to put on? <laughs> Honestly, here there's a fairly big difference as well. The dog booties are all really easy to put on. So they were clearly the winners. Took about 11 seconds to put on a dog booty um, versus it takes about 13 seconds to put on the sock, followed by 31 seconds on average to put on the Polar Trex boot. Takes about 30, 31 seconds to also put on a mutt look. So if you're using the combination of the sock and the boot from Rough Wear, they're gonna take the longest to put on. Mutt looks are in the middle. Dog booties are real nice and quick. So, all right. After that, I kind of go through how well do they stay on. Really, the dog booties stay on the best. <laughs> Although the Rough Wear Polar Trex boots are pretty awesome in that category too. And one of the reasons I think the Mutt Luck um, is a little behind in this performance test is I believe I got this one size too big. I was in between sizes and I ultimately decided to go up a size so that she could spread her paws and have good, you know, room inside of the boot. Um, but then it, it just slides off a little bit easier. It's harder to keep it really nice and tight and keep it on. Comfort factor. Glia likes the dog booties. Glia likes the polar trucks on her back feet, not on her front feet. It really gets in the way of her dew claws. She seems kind of ambivalent about the mutt looks. So she would say dog booties, mutt lucks because it goes on all four feet, then the polar treks. Those front dew claws are kind of a problem with where the polar treks band hits. It's a little less adjustable. So next we get to tell you which one is the best dog boot. Drum roll please. All right. The number one dog boot across all of my testing. Here is the beautiful chart. The number one dog boot is the 500 denier dogbooty.com dog boot, which actually happens to be my subjective favorite as well. So if you're gonna go out and buy some winter dog boots for your dog, I really think you can get away with these fairly inexpensive dog boots from dogbooties.com. Uh, they stay on really well. They dry out pretty easily. They get some protection against some of the slush, not a lot. Um, very easy to put on, very easy to put in your pocket and bring out on the trail. And they're not that much um, less warm compared to the other boots. So this is my winner. <laughs> and as you'll see, if you go and look at some of my other dog boot review videos, you will see that this is the boot that I have said is my favorite the whole way through. Um, so when I tallied up all the scores, I, one was kind of the best performer and then I would go all the way down to five since if you count them all separately, the dog booties the boot separately, there are five I have here in front of me. Um, one was the best, five was the worst. Not all categories got a five because sometimes there were a lot of ties and when they're ties, I just gave them the next section down. Um, so as you look across, you can see that that 500 denier dog booty, that one I got a score of 14. The 330 and the 1000s both got a score of 16. And then the Mutt Lux and Rough Wear Polar Trex boots were both got a score of 27. So they're pretty similar, right? If you really want something with more sole, more protection, more warmth, um, go ahead and, and grab those Polar Trex dog boots or the Mutt Lux. Um, but you can probably get away just fine with these dogbooties.com. There's a reason the sled dogs are wearing them. <laughs> All right. Below, if you look in the description of this video, I do have some affiliate links there. Um, so affiliate links are essentially a way that I support this channel. Um, if you click on them and then purchase something, I do get a little like commission on the sale, essentially. Um, don't feel like you have to buy through them. I just want to disclose them so that you know that they're there. Um, so I'm an affiliate with Roughwear and then also on Amazon. So the Mutt Lux are sold through Amazon, so you can see those below. I have no affiliation whatsoever with the dogbooties.com. And I did buy all of these boots myself. <laughs> so these are um, unbiased reviews, so to speak. 
Anyways, regardless of what boot you choose for your dog, I really hope that you guys can get the right gear to keep going all winter. Those of you with a Husky, you'll be fine without anything. Enjoy the winter. But those of us with our short-coated dogs that are better suited to the warm summer temps, um, good luck finding the right gear. You can find it and it is worth it to keep you and your dog active through the long, cold winter months. All right, happy hiking, everyone.